beautiful person. It is the last day of the 14-day challenge. I'm kind of sad that it's over, but there it is. It's all good. I'm going to continue making videos. I was making videos before. I will continue to make them, but uh, this is going to be the end of my series about this book, Still Reversed Mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck. And um, so uh, I'm just going to finish up talking about the last chapter. Hey, CA, talking about the last chapter, and I'm not going to be able to do all of the last chapter. I talked about some of it yesterday, um, but I'm going to talk about the last part, which is about the journey to becoming, uh, having a true growth mindset. Hi, Jim. Nice to see you. Let me just bring up my notes. I have a Google Doc in which I made notes for uh, for this book. So there's more in the Google Doc than what I'm going to talk about. And if you would like access to this Google Doc with my cliff notes for this book, Mindset, then uh, just drop me a message. I'll be happy to send it to you. Um, okay, so I've talked about all sorts of things like uh, she gives various uh, scenarios, various dilemmas that people, that, that people have in life. And then uh, Questions like, how would a fixed mindset re react? How would a growth mindset react? I'm not going to talk about all of those because it's a lot, but I'm putting some of it in the Google Doc, so you might want to have a look at that. But uh, anyway, so uh, I'm going to talk about the journey to a true growth mindset. Because she talks about different things like, for instance, that some people are entitled and um, they just want the world to give them stuff and not have to create anything in it. And I just want to talk just for a second about a concept that I learned from Ray Higdon, um, which is the concept of value. And I was actually talking with somebody this evening who was uh, thought that they were going to get a bunch of money from somebody and then ended up not, not happening and they were kind of upset. But uh, we talked about, the person said that it actually made them feel kind of icky, the idea of getting money without doing anything. And uh, this is, I talked with them about the concept of value. If you have given somebody value for something, then they give you money in appreciation. And I um, should have plugged that in. Excuse me just a sec. There we go. Um, then if you give somebody something of value and then they give you money and appreciation, then you both feel good. But um, that was just an aside. So um, in the journey, she talks about the journey to a growth mindset, a true growth mindset, as opposed to the false one that she was talking about before in which people uh, are not actually trying to grow and learn. They're just saying, oh, I'm so open-minded and so on. But that's not necessarily growth, right? So when um, in the journey to a true growth mindset, it's interesting, she says the first step is to embrace your fixed mindset, which is interesting because aren't we trying to get rid of that? No, it's part of us. It's part of who we are. All humans are a mixture of, of a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. And so embrace that you do have a fixed mindset and you probably grew up with it. So don't try and, and squish it down. Embrace it. And then step two, she says, what are your fixed mindset triggers? Do you get triggered into a fixed mindset, for example, if something's too, more difficult than you expected it to be? If you meet somebody who is much better at what you do than something that you really like, this is definitely something that network marketers have to deal with, that they get kind of, they call it comparitis, right? But I mean, you can get that in anything. But if you meet somebody who's much better at what you do than, than you are, then it can be kind of hard not to fall into a fixed mindset and be envious and jealous and think I'm never going to be as good as them and kind of hate them a little bit. It's not a good thing spiritually. So um, it's a whole different story. But uh, those are signs of, those are triggers that throw you into a fixed mindset uh, kind of state. So triggers like that, something's hard, someone is much better than you. Um, she mentions a whole bunch of triggers in the book. I'll put them in the Google Doc. But, um, and then it's very interesting. She says, give your fixed mindset persona a name. Isn't that interesting? So uh, I've been thinking about that. Hi, Wendy. I've been thinking about that. I'm not sure what the name for my fixed mindset persona would be. Um, I'll have to think about it. But uh, definitely somebody that I can sometimes can show up in my life. And um, 
so again it's a process and uh, she gives an example of like uh, executives and people like that who are working with each other in a team and so on and then this guy basically calls his fixed mindset persona which is very controlling he named it Dwayne I don't know but anyway when Dwayne shows up things do not go very well for the team so it's kind of interesting so anyway so you become aware of when this kind of comes up hi Karen and um, and then she says take it on the journey with you so educate it make it you have to understand that this is part of you in a different part of the book she mentions um, that when you get new beliefs it's not like surgery it, it, like if you have knee surgery they actually you know actually I don't know if this is what they do hi Kenton if they if they have the kind of surgery she says you know they take out the defective knee and put in a new one in the case of beliefs it's not um, the old uh, the old uh, um, the old belief is not gone you just have a new one along with it and the old belief can sometimes pop up and you just have to recognize it and say okay this is an old belief it does not serve me and once you recognize it and know that it's there then it's uh, it can be better easier to deal with but it's important to recognize and to take it on the journey with you because it's it's part of you if you try to destroy part of yourself <laughs> that never works out well you just have to take it with you and integrate it and make it part of who you are and then it can't ambush you and do things with that you don't understand what's going on if you understand what's going on you say okay I'm being triggered in this situation by whatever uh, the difficulty that I'm having with something um, this particular person maybe reminds me of somebody that used to be very judgmental towards me and that makes me feel very um, judged situations like that if you can recognize it articulate it bring it out into the open and deal with it then it can't control you and then she says understanding that everyone has a fixed mindset persona can give us more compassion for people and let me tell you once you can have compassion for people instead of wanting to wring their necks <laughs> life is so much better for everybody and then she says for the growth mindset to bear fruit we have to keep setting goals goals for growth so it's not you don't it never ends it's a journey okay if you're in a growth mindset that means you're always growing it doesn't matter if you're 100 years old you're either growing or dying so you have to keep setting new growth goals and um, she gives some example of like you wake up in the morning and um, first of all there's a picture that I wanted to show you that's in the book and I also I put it in the in the Google Doc I found it online put it in the Google Doc so this is a picture of the two mindsets as I said it's in the Google Doc and um, it's, it's she says you know make a copy of it stick it on your mirror look at it in the morning it's just about the different mindsets and just serves a reminder of how to uh, how you want to think because it's all about what you really what you want to think if you keep working on yourself you're less likely to be ambushed by things you don't understand and just keep keep working on it and she said like what are the opportunities for growth and learning today for myself and for the people around me so when you wake up in the morning ask yourself what opportunities are you going to have for growth and learning it's an interesting thought and then you make a plan and then you say when where and how will I embark on my plan so very concrete have a, a plan for your excuse me for your growth and, um, and then she says what do I have to do to maintain and continue the growth so this is um, sort of the end of this of this book like I said there is more in it and I will we'll be putting it in the Google Doc but this is day 14 of the 14 day challenge and I wanted to thank you for hanging out with me and uh, on this journey of learning about the growth mindset and the fixed mindset and how we can go from one to the other but the the fixed mindset doesn't go away it just it, we can uh, grow beyond it and treat it with love and care and bring it along for the ride just recognize it when it pops up its head it's this ego just really wants to wants to help you and to keep you safe but 
you have to keep growing. So um, thank you again for being on this journey with me. As I mentioned before, if you would like uh, this uh, Google Doc, drop me a drop me a message. I, probably what I'll do is I won't give you access to the Google Doc. I will make a PDF and send it to you. That's probably better. So uh, drop me a message if you would like the PDF of my Cliff Notes from this book, Mindset by Dr. Carol Dweck. Have a great night. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, I love you. Bye.